And Rebecca Lopez is joining us now with new information. We've just learned that the firefighter who was shot is going into surgery. That information is just coming in. Rebecca has additional information, so let's go back to her. Rebecca? Well, that's exactly what I had heard, that the uh, Dallas firefighter was going into surgery. And also, I'm being told, not only by DPD sources, but now DFR sources, that this did start off as a suicide call. And then once firefighters got to the scene, they heard a gun blast, a gunshot. And then now we're hearing, obviously, that there is an active shooter, someone with an AK-47 or a high-powered rifle that is out there. And Dallas police searching frantically for that person. They obviously they have every personnel, everybody that uh, can get to the scene here, including Dallas SWAT, the gang unit, the crime response teams, which are trained in these types of uh, situations where they have uh, better equipment, shields, that kind of thing. And so that is what we're seeing here. Let me show you. You can see some of the officers that have gathered here. Here we're seeing members of the gang unit. We're seeing uh, officers that also some are in plain clothes. I saw one officer that just came up here. He's actually off today, but he uh, is here at the scene and uh, they have put on some bulletproof vests. You have officers that also were told to come down here from DPD headquarters, if available, uh, to respond out here to the scene. So uh, obviously a very critical situation out here. And Dallas Fire Rescue uh, Chief, I'm told, is also uh, en route to the uh, to the hospital as well as multiple firefighters that are there to check on the uh, off firefighter, fire, firefighter or possible multiple firefighters that have been shot. Rebecca, I might re be repeating some of what you just said here because I was uh, reading some notes coming in. We've just gotten an official press release from the city of Dallas, their public information officer, that around 11.31 a.m. this morning, they had a shooting call in the 3200 block of Reynolds Street, and that is just across from the fire training academy, so it could just be a matter of coincidence that that call came to an area that happened to be close to the fire academy. At that point, they say Dallas Fire Rescue EMT, one of their units was struck and an EMT paramedic was injured. Again, they're saying this was near the training academy. That paramedic has been transported to Baylor. That's the first responder we've been reporting on and is now undergoing surgery and they do confirm this is an active scene as they cordon off that neighborhood and continue the search for the gunman. Um, just to reiterate for those of you who might just be tuning in here, this has been a citywide assist call for the city of Dallas, so every available police officer is on the scene in this neighborhood, and it's, it's a bit mixed use. It's commercial in some areas. There are neighborhoods, as you see, tree-lined streets of smaller homes. There also are apartment complexes there, and as Gary Alte alluded okay, to, this is going to be a pretty um, intensive search for this gunman uh, in this area that is fairly wooded and uh, fairly densely populated. Also, any number of apartment complexes that are around that area of South Haskell, Military Parkway, Dolphin Road, all of this just south of I-30 in East Dallas, about five miles from downtown Dallas. And again, uh, Baylor Scott and White Hospital um, on the east side of the city is where this firefighter has been taken, as well as perhaps several other people who have been shot. By Jason Wheeler's account, at Baylor, there have been a number of people from this scene transported to the hospital there. Gary Alte, you're still there above the scene, and we've seen a little bit of activity, cars coming and going and so forth, but nothing that would indicate that they're moving in on any particular home. No, there's, uh, it, it's pretty static here in terms of not a lot of uh, intense activity. It's very intense in terms of how many folks are here. Appears to be a command vehicle and a SWAT vehicle in the center of your screen. Two ambulances are on the left side uh, of that road there, right in the center of your screen. And then what appears to be in front of that is either a command vehicle. I think it's a command vehicle uh, because I can see steps going in and out of the back there. And so they're concentrating on the street that's on the right side, which that is, is Reynolds Street. And so, as you mentioned earlier, this call came out on Reynolds Avenue. It is the opposite side of the street on the left and north of your screen. Let me pull out just a little bit slowly here. On the left and side of your screen in that green grass area, that's where, up in the left corner, that is where the, uh, the fire academy is. So it's, very, it's literally across the street. You could throw a rock from one side to the other and, and have that on the police fire academy. But that being said, there are plenty of EMT types, a lot of... Uh, uh, fire department folks in this area to help that are helping with training that can certainly help with anything uh, medically that needs to go and anything else with manpower issues for that area. But again, a tough area for folks 
for police officials to search um, just because it's all going to be in this area. I'm going to pull out here and show you. They're going to be looking in this treed area as I slowly mm -hmm. pull out and show you. There is an industrial area there. I believe that's a meat packing plant. I won't, uh, I'm not 100% sure. But on the top of your screen with those uh, stacks, I believe that's a meat packing plant. And then that's bordered by I-30 going east and west. And then, um, you know, and you can get some apartments and stuff off uh, off there. So that's a pretty big area to cover in the search. And somebody on foot can move in that area pretty quickly and pretty stealthy uh, to get away from folks that, that are chasing them. So it's going to be a tough search for these officers to find that person to, to find who's ever they're looking for. Gary, if you pan a bit to the right there, is there a police presence on the median of I-30 as traffic goes by there? If you pan down just a bit. Well, I, I know that they're stopping the, yep, there is. There's some uh, activity right there. On they're the having shoulder. people. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they're, they've 